in the last tutorial, I said we're going to be using the flat assembler. Actually, we're not. Because what I'm going to start doing is since the bog is the main thing we want to start coding our um, assembly and to understand it, my flat assembler tutorials are going to be their own little own little YouTube tutorials. But don't think you're going to have to learn assembly again for it. It uses the same as this. So in my flat assembly tutorials, I'm just going to assume you've watched all my assembly tutorials that I've out so far. So you just don't worry, it's not, it's not going to like reteach you everything. And flat assembler is much nicer. But before we go to the flat assembler, there is like an, another. And a, before we start this whole get user input, there's something I want to show you real quick. So create your file on your desktop, an assembly file. Just open Notepad and save a file as test.asm. And then open it with Notepad. Now, Remember how we like, like um, said like A100 jumped 120 and then we open space to find data here? Since we're writing in Notepad now and we're not feeding it into the console, we don't, we can just go ahead and add all our data at the end. Because remember how I said, um, like, Remember how I said like there's an array going up forever and like your data is here? Well, what we can actually do is we can just say our code stops here, but then right here we can define all our data at this point on. So just go to where your code stops right here in the array, then everything above that is where we're going to define our data. The reason this is, that was a horrible uh, design, but I hope you got the picture. But, um,. My point is we're going to start defining everything at the end of our codes. So let's say I want to call on 09. I want to display a string. I'm going to say mob dx. Let's say we can name it anything. 290. Any place. Let's say 200. Int 21. Int. Tw whoops. Mob a808. Int 20. 1 and 20. Now we can just go ahead and put this at the end. Go to A200, DB, hello world. And that it's that simple now, RCX. I like to do this. Let's say you want to make your file 200 bytes big. I like to change the zeros to 99. The reason is because if I want my, two, my file 200 bytes big, I'm just going to go ahead and add 99 at the end. And I'm going to use that extra 99 I added to, and store all my um, like variables, my all, my all my data there. So I'm just store, storing this at 200. I can go to let's say a240 and store 0d, zero 0d, no, zero zero press any key to continue. RCX name test.com write you can if you want to make it look nicer write the word quit instead of a Q that will also work I can go up here mob ah240 um, mo whoops not 240 09 mob dx240 and 21 see one thing you may have noticed that's not a lot nicer doing it this way and you can have all your codes actually just at one part we don't have to keep on jumping around and then anytime we want to define some bytes just write where you want to define it then db and that it's so much quicker and easier and you don't have to do any math like if there was a jump here like you've seen you'd say okay we got this one's at 202 the reason I didn't show you this before because I wanted you to understand data more and while we're jumping and also if you want to if you're coding from the console where since we're coding from files now and you want to do this way when you put your codes at the end that means you have to plan out what your file is going to look like before you start putting it into the prompt but now since we're coding in files like this you don't have to plan it out so we can write debug test.asm and then it writes it, and we can just write test, and it says hello world, press the key to continue. But I want to show you how to get user input. First thing you want to do is think of a free space. 
Right here is a free space, 200. All of 200 all the way to 299, or the max size of our file. So that's a free space. So, we can just erase... Hmm, I'm going to go ahead and leave pressing the key to continue there. But let's erase the first one. But let's go ahead and add some stuff. 200. Find bytes. What is your name? Now, let's say... Yeah, 240, press the key to continue. I'm going to give myself a little bit more room. Like... A280, define bytes. Um... Hello, comma, and then that. So what we're going to do, we're going to make it say, what is your name? Let's you type something in. Then it's going to say hello in your name, then press any key to continue and pause. So we're going to do, we're going to say 09 mob dx 221. That's going to call on the 200 place in data and say what is your name. Now mob ah 3 app. 3 app is for getting user a uh, user string. And then what we're going to do, and it's not going to, it's going to send something to a flag. Well, or not a flag, the AL register, but we're not going to worry about that because that's not how we're going to save our data. To save our data, we're going to call on a space in data. Let's say 320 and then int 21. What this is going to do, it's now going to, when I type something in, it's going to do this by itself. It's going to go to 320 and it's going to define bytes and then whatever you type in. So that is going to do that by itself. It's like, okay, so you want to get a user input, so it's going to pause for me to type something in. Then it's going to be like, okay, you, you, you're you getting it from 320. DX is not really to call to display values. 3X is just to call on a location and um your data and depending on the function it may depend what it does with that location so this one 3f will put what I type in in here so that that means what I can do is say mob a809 mob dx 280 that's the hello and 21 then I can say mob a h 09 mob dx 320. Since I just stored the string at 320, that means I can call it later at 320 and display it. So n21 mob a809 mob dx 240. That's pressing the key to continue. n21 n20. Now I want to show you something about this. Let's run this. Watch this. If I type in test and it says, what is your name? I type in pi, it's going to give me all of this. You may wonder why. It's because when it stores your string, it doesn't automatically put a string terminated, which is the dollar sign. So if I type in pi and a dollar sign, it's going to say, hello pi, just fine. But you may wonder, how can I get around that? Well, it's actually not that difficult. What we're going to do is since it doesn't have a string terminator, it will include all the data after it as part of the string until it finds a dollar sign, which is the string terminator. So what we're going to do, just like right after it, let's say it's up here we said it was at 320. Let's go to 340. And right after that, let's define a string terminator. So that means when it'll find its string terminator just right after 340. Now when I type in test, it's only going to be kind of fixed. It's still going to give you a little bit of this um, static or whatever they call it. It's still going to give you a little bit of that. So how we want to remove that is we want to use 0D, how I said 0D aligns it to the side of the console and put a whole bunch of spaces. Doing that, if you want, we can make this go a little bit further. Let's say two, 
just to make sure we don't get any errors. Let's make this like near the end of the file. So we can have a lot of room for the string the user types in. 270. Now look. Test. Pi. Hello, Pi. Give me a little bit of static, maybe because I forgot to put. Wait, what? Hold on. Maybe I forgot to save it. There we go. See, I typed in what is your name? Pi. Hello, Pi. The only problem with this method, since this is the easiest way to do it, because actually I'm quite sure put it, adding another string to a string, like putting the dollar sign at the end, really complicated. The only downside to this is it starts a new line, which means you can't like put an exclamation mark at the end of this, because it'll go on the next line. But this is just an example of how simply how to get user input. Um, John Deer Brosis. Hello, John Deer Brosis. So, oh, whoops. I forgot to, that's why I wasn't pausing. I forgot to tell it this 0h. Now, this tutorial I ran it kind of slow because um, it, this code um, assembly uh, as you saw I messed up quite a bit and I have a lot to show you so you can play around the 3f if you want but that's to get user input just remember when you use dx to call on a place of data with 3f you're not calling on it to get the data and get the data inside of it you're calling on it just to define the data you're going to be using so AH is going to okay, you want to write a string. Where do you want to send that to? And you're going to send it to 320.